results from a local researcher testing blood samples against the Omicron variant. He says it's important to discuss antibodies, but it's equally critical to focus on cellular immunity, which lasts longer than the initial vaccine antibody boost. COVID infections and vaccines boost short-term antibodies. Those antibodies trigger long-term immune memory in the form of B and T cells. So the immune system has two main arms that are really important for protecting us against SARS. Breakthrough infections show the process in action as vaccinated people whose antibodies wane test positive for COVID, but T and B cells help them not get as sick. So again, that's why we're seeing that there are breakthrough infections, but we're not seeing a dramatic rise in hospitalizations and deaths because cellular immune defenses don't go down as much over time. So we're developing new tests of cellular immunity that we hope we can roll out in the community to facilitate our understanding of who's immune, who might need to get boosted, uh, how the vaccine is working in the general population. Until that test is ready, Northwestern Medicine's Dr. Thomas McDade and his team are analyzing immunity in blood samples of COVID survivors, vaccinated, and boosted patients. What we're seeing with Omicron is similar to the story with Delta over the summer. The variant has changed a bit, which means that the, the vaccine that we all received, which was generated against the original version of the virus, isn't quite as effective. But it's still very effective, especially with our cellular immune defenses. The blue line represents a blood sample before and after vaccine. Vaccination. The pattern is similar to the red line, which represents someone who recovered from COVID, then got the vaccine. After the first dose, a small response, a little better for the previously infected. After the second shot, antibodies shoot up, but they wane over the next six months. Over the summer, uh, antibodies start to come down over time, as we know, and we're back um, basically where we were after the first vaccine dose. Then, with a booster? Once you get a booster dose, about a week later, your antibodies go up to over 100. So that's four times higher than where you were after full vaccination with dose two. And it's 25 times higher than where you were the week before because your antibodies have gone down over time. The original vaccine was not designed to target the hundreds of mutations in Omicron, but that you have strength in numbers here, even if the fit isn't exactly right. If we increase our antibodies overall, even if they're not a perfect match for Omicron, they should be effective at preventing infection. Keeping up with a rapidly mutating virus is like focusing on the flu, only faster. We all have some experience with it, um, particularly through childhood, and we carry that forward. And that's where we'll get to eventually with COVID-19. But the more people who can get vaccinated globally, the less virus will be in circulation, the fewer opportunities it will have to evolve a new variant that escapes our immune defenses, and then we'll all be in better shape. You see, you see, this goes to show all what I was saying. The, 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 the vibe that getting that shot, they can't do nothing with a mama. Well, I can't even pronounce it. A mama crumb, whatever. Oh, I'm going to call it. Oh, uh, the vaccine does not fight against that. It's too, they, they saying, but most likely. And them little words let me know for a fact that it's a shot in the wind because all I can suggest is people stay prayed up because ain't nothing they get out that can help you against the old. But 